Welcome back to the YouTube channel. Today we have an interesting one. It's a 1958 property, 1300 square feet, and it's been flipped. Uh, we're always gonna find stuff on a flipped home, mainly because of how old it is, right? It's 1958 and things have changed a lot. Code changes every three years, so we're just gonna find stuff. The, the thing is, is whenever they flip the home, they normally try to do it in the cheapest manner possible. We just don't know, we haven't really walked inside yet, but let's go find out. Let's go check it out. Okay, we're gonna go inside first because it is hot outside. But what I really wanna to talk to you all about is whenever you're going and looking at a flip home, a lot of people can get enamored by the uh, cosmetics of a property and be like, oh, this home is perfect because it looks really good. Well, with this video, let's, let me try to help you to just maybe run to the major components of a home to start to judge like, hey, is this gonna to be too expensive to, uh, for us to purchase? Or can, or, or can we handle what we're gonna walk into? I hope that made sense. <laughs> uh, so starting this, whenever we first walked into the property, we noticed it's, it's just as hot inside as it is outside. So the first thing I'm always gonna run to is the HVAC system and see how old it is, is it functioning? So let, let's go do that first. Okay, so walked outside and we noticed that the uh, condenser's just not running at all, which is an obvious warning sign. The, the thermostat's on, on the inside, condenser's not running, it's hot inside, so we're automatically gonna assume that the HVAC's getting close to the end of its, li end of its life, or it needs to be worked on, which automatically adds money into your budget of whenever you purchase this property or you're gonna negotiate on it. So this is just the condenser side. You have another part of the unit up in the attic, which is your coils and your furnace. So what I would do if I was purchasing this property, I would take a look at this real quick, just kind of look it over, get the age, does it have R410 free on in it? And then I'd run up to the attic to see how old that piece is, just to try to understand how much money I'm about to spend. So right here on the label, I see that it's a uh, 2006 unit and it's using uh, R22 Freon there. So it's a 13 sear, which is nice. So with it using R22 Freon, what they, they discontinued it. So if they do do any repair with this, it's gonna be astronomically more expensive than if you have a newer unit for the R2, R410 Freon. So you're automatically going to assume that you're going to have to replace this unit because any HVAC technician that comes out, they're more than likely gonna to recommend to replace this, this, this unit here, not only because it's a little bit older, but it's mainly because it's using that R22 Freon. But let's go up in the attic and uh, see what we got next. Okay, coming in the attic space, the first thing I noticed, so uh, there is no direct pathing to the unit, so you can't easily service it. And also as a, a common home buyer, I don't expect you to walk across, or you shouldn't even do it, walk across all the ceiling joists to get over here and look at the unit. But the first thing I notice, you know, if you could look at it from your point of view, is those coils do look older over there, but you do have a newer, newer furnace, which is, which is a good sign. They replaced some of the, uh, the unit, but you're still gonna be looking at a new condenser and a new coils on the attic space, in the attics, or for the property. <laughs> Sorry, it's, it's getting hot. Um, but let's just take a look in the attic while we're here. You know, everything that you can see from the attic ladder, you can kind of just get an assessment of what you're about to walk into with a property. So, you know, just do a quick scan around in the attic space. And just looking around, you can see that they've replaced a lot of the galvanized plumbing with PVC. And it could just be the horizontal line. So if you notice that, then you want to go to the bathrooms, look underneath the sinks and, um, and behind the toilets to see if they did the vertical lines too as well. But there's a lot of debris up here. So normally uh, that just sign is kind of a sign of there might be, you know, they might've been cutting corners most of the time. And we don't know how much of that plumbing is replaced and done correctly. So we're automatically, as a home inspector, we're gonna recommend to have the plumbing further evaluated because of the amount of weird connections in the attic space, of galvanized plumbing, debris 
around. We just don't know how much they've replaced and we want to make sure the homeowner is fully informed about the property. The next thing I notice whenever I'm standing around in the attic space is there's a lot of missing insulation in several areas throughout the property and it's been beaten down. And so you're looking at a budget of maybe trying to add in some more insulation whenever you move in because it's gonna, uh, because it's gonna increase your energy bills if you don't. So I know that was a lot of information all at once, but the biggest thing is, is what I want you to do whenever you're looking at purchasing a flip home is do a quick scan of the attic. Most of the time you're able to pull down the ladder, attic ladder and just do a quick scan and just see what you're about to get into. And if it kind of looks like sloppy work, it probably is sloppy work. The next thing that I want you to look at is all the major components of the property, kind of sticking with the plumbing. Uh, right here, you know, you get your water heater, it's gonna be one of your next major components of the property. And you just wanna kind of scan these things from the, the top down. And this leads into the same reason why I believe they need a, a plumber to come in and further evaluate this property. Or as a homeowner, you would know that you need to get a plumber out here is if you know you have you know, heavy corrosion, the temperature and pressure relief valve goes up, it's a little bit older, it's a 2007 water heater. And when you have all of these things with the weird plumbing in the attic space, you know this was probably not done by a licensed professional and it just adds on to what you're about to tackle uh, whenever you're purchasing a, um, a flip home. So just keep all these things in mind and start writing them down if you're looking at putting an offer on a property like this because after your inspection, it just adds in a, a laundry list of things to do. So what I was talking about when I, when I was in the attic space about looking underneath the sinks, we're just trying to make sure the PVC uh, travels throughout the whole property on the horizontal and vertical lines. And uh, you just look underneath your sink. You know, that's the best sign to see if it's done and which is nice. They do have some new PVC. It's not done like 100% perfect. It's a good sign that it's there. But you have PVC drain lines and PVC uh, water supply lines underneath the sink in this area. So let's, let's take a look at it. The last thing I want you to do is kind of walk around the exterior property and find the clean out. So we looked at the water supply lines in the attic, the water supply lines underneath the sink. And now I would just want you to find a clean out and you want to see if it matches the PVC on the inside or the type of drain lines. Well, right here, we have cast iron clean out on the outside, but we have PVC drain lines on the inside. So there's a chance, I'm not saying that it has happened, but there's a chance that they only replace the PVC on the interior of the property and not the PVC under the ground. So what we always do is we recommend to the homeowner to either do a sewer scope, sewer scope scan, or we recommend for the buyer to ask for documentation to see if they replaced all the underground sewer lines. Either way, it works, uh, but you just wanna make sure that if you're purchasing a property, does it, have, does it have cast iron or not? Because cast iron only has like about a 100 year lifespan here in Houston, Texas, and no, sorry, 50 years. 50 year lifespan here in Houston, Texas, and if it, and it, it's going bad all over the place. I hope that comes out good. <laughs> Okay, uh, the next thing, we're just gonna move into the electrical. I'm just gonna do a quick scan because this is like as if you're a home buyer purchasing it, you know, with limited knowledge and trying to see what you're walking into. Well, right here we have a new outside main shutoff and we have a new panel box, newish panel box on the inside, typically meaning they upgraded the electrical at one point in time. So you know, purchasing the property, you may not have to worry about it as much as the other items such as plumbing, foundation, roof. So. You just take a quick look at it and be like, hey, oh, okay, well, they've replaced this. Next, move on and go and look at another purchase because you make these decisions real quick. You know, you only have a few hours to determine if you want to purchase this property or not because properties are moving so fast. Okay, just a short recap. What have we covered so far moving through the property? We've looked at the HVAC because we looked at that first because it was hot, right? And then at that same time, we saw the, the repaired plumbing. We knocked out the plumbing. We just did a quick spot of the electrical so the next move that you'd probably want to move into is the foundation and the roof. All this kind of happens simultaneously. It's just hard to do it in a video. So I'm hoping this storyline comes out for y'all. So um, let's just do like a quick walk around, see what, how the foundation feels, see if we have any abnormal cracks on the property, and then we'll knock out the roof and then you can determine, determine if you want to purchase this property or not. Okay, so I've said this several times throughout the video and it really is this easy. Whenever you walk up to a property, 
kind of do a walk back, big scan, big picture, see how the property's moving, shifting, see how the water's moving around the structure. And then what I want you to do is just put your eye down the brick line and look straight down the brick line. And if it looks more or less straight, that's good. And what also I want you to do is you look between the windows and the brick, see if there's any major separation between these items and then look for any cracking. So for example, walked up on one right here, right? This one is just a, a normal thermal crack. The reason why I'm saying this is because it's straight up and down. There's no crazy angles. There's no real significant separation between the window. There's no separation between the freeze board and the brick line is straight. So whenever you see this crack, yes, it could be scary to a traditional home buyer, but as a home inspector or anyone that looks at properties regularly, we see this every day. Okay, just one more time. Just want to show you that you have a really long straight wall for, I mean, for the property size, right? And you can see that this wall is straight going up and down. There's no significant movement across the brick line. All the freeze, uh, freeze boards are more or less no movement at all and uh, there's no significant cracking. So automatically you can get a pretty good feeling that the foundation on this property is fine, especially walking through the property. We don't see a lot of major patches or cracks. The floor is more or less flat. And uh, if you are worried about it, you can always ask your home inspector to use a zip level to measure the floors for you. But uh, this one, I'm not even worried about the foundation at all. This, this looks good. Okay, we're closing up this video. It got hot, we had to take a break. The camera even had to take a break. It got too hot and shut off on us. So the final thing I want you to do is just walk around the exterior of the property and look at the roof structure all the way around and look at it from both angles. Look at it from far on the front and far on the back and sides and you'll be surprised. Like on the front here, you can see they, they cleaned it off and it looks real clean. But on the back side from the ground level, you can see that it's, you know, the, the flashing's really rusted and there's a lot of damage on it. So, you know, you can really start to write all this stuff down. You can get a judgment before you put an offer on the property at all of what you're walking into. I mean, like, let's just start from the top down, right? Let's, you got the roof, right? So you're going to know you're going to need to have some roof repairs. You have some plumbing. You know you're going to need some plumbing repairs. You're going to need a new HVAC system on this one. The foundation's fine and the electrical overall looks good and overall the cosmetics are fine on this property, right? So, you know, you have a pretty decent list of knowing that you're going to have to put in some money on this property before you move in or be able to live in it sustainably without any major issues showing up. Man, I hope that made sense too. So that's Chris with the action. If you have any questions, please leave a comment in the, and hit that like button that always helps out the YouTube channel. And I know this video was a little wonky, but we really do just make this up as we go. So we'll see how it goes. Catch you on the next one. Bye.